Whoa. This is crazy. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying your Sunday because I woke up today. I walked outside. I got a cup of coffee. I refreshed the price of all the cryptocurrency assets on CoinGecko and CoinMarketCap. I looked at you know Bitcoin's price and it hit me. It hit me in the head. I realized that what the heck Bitcoin should be dumping right now. Bitcoin and most of assets, right, with wartime, it doesn't do well. Like gold doesn't do well during wartime. Gold does well up until wartime. Why are these assets not tanking and, and like basically going to zero? It's because of this right here. And this could be the potential moment that really changes everything in crypto. This could be it right here. Okay, so I want to lay out the story for you guys, this narrative that could play out. And we already seeing it. We're already watching it play out right before our eyes. Two Russia billionaires call for peace. Can billionaires start adopting crypto because of the current events that are happening right now? I think yes. I think yes. And like I talked about in yesterday's video, we could potentially get this flipping. All right. We could potentially get this bull run that we've been all waiting for and I've been skeptical about, which is very healthy, by the way. You should definitely be skeptical about everything, but we could definitely get this flipping and I'm I'm slightly turning bullish, all right? Things are getting out of hand, but let me get you guys caught up a little bit because I talked about this in my last video and it seems like you guys like this kind of wartime economics um, you know, explanation here. Um, and so I want to dive into this very briefly. There are different types of debt cycles. Okay. So this is not like a fundamentally American thing. There's been other countries that have hold the strategic power of a world reserve currency. Right. And although sometimes, you know, people don't physically enslave you, they can financially enslave you. So as you can see here on the right, there's all different types of wars that happen before a physical military war. And, you know, it's like usually trade and economic, technology wars, geopolitical and capital wars. And these things ultimately get to the physical action of a military war. And I think now with media, um, you know, like in World War II, there was no like, there was media, but it wasn't as crazy as it is today. Um, and I'm telling you right now, the trade and economic uh, capital and the perception and these narratives that are happening, right, is literally stopping Russia. Like. I don't think we've ever experienced all of these countries coming together, all of these separate entities, including Elon Musk, Russian billionaires, Anonymous is jumping into the picture, it's getting out of hand. All of these entities almost like attacking Russia, but not physically. It's almost like the overwhelming amount of, of you know negativity sent at Russia is stopping them in their tracks. I It's crazy. I don't think a war has been fought on the internet like this ever. And it's so powerful. The power of narrative is really flipping the script. I mean, think about the, the you know, the Ukrainian president. This guy is a hero. He put the, the vest on, he put the bulletproof vest on, and he's literally pushing the narrative as the war hero. And Putin is just clearly the villain. Everybody's attacking villain, including, you know, everybody's attacking the villain, including the Russians themselves. And it's this big story that's playing out right now that's literally stopping Russia in its tracks. And I think it's so crazy. But I did want to explain the debt cycle really quickly because this will really make it, uh, you know, put into perspective for everybody. And if you didn't watch the last video, I mean, this will kind of get you caught up. But basically, you know, there's all different forms of hard money. Usually countries, when they when they get the world reserve power, they start off as, as hard money. And they have like, you know, little or no debt. Uh, the money is backed by something real, most likely gold. Um, and, and it's basically max max credibility, but little credit, right? So, you know, the country, um, you know, has a lot of credibility, right? Um, and, you know, people are willing to use their dollar more and more, right? And then eventually they make claims on hard money and they start taking out uh, banking notes. And, and this is what a dollar is, essentially, is a claim on money. Um, and, you know, you're making claims like, hey, uh, you know, I can't really buy this cup of coffee with uh, a gold bar, but I can buy 
the cup of coffee with one one hundredth of a gold bar. Um, and this paper re represents that. And hey, um, barista, if you uh, take this paper, you can go to the bank and get that gold that one one hundredth of a gold bar, right? And this is what money is. We expand credit, but it's compromising credibility because you know the bank has all this power, right? And they have too much power in some cases. And then eventually it gets to this point where you know, uh, you have to maximize the credit. It, it gets into a fiat money. This is where fiat money comes into place where, you know, it's, you're, you're basically way too much debt. You're, you have way too much debt. They took out too much claims on money. They printed so much money, uh, maximizes, um, you know, the debt, it increases the debt, but minimizes credibility and people start losing faith. Um, you know, and I showed videos, uh, or, or actual specific images in the last video, um, about how, you know, Russia and China have been making themselves America proof, uh, you know, since we saw the two, 2008 housing market crash. Once, you know, the world saw that America has the strategic advantage over the monetary supply with its sanctions and its economic powers, uh, you know, all countries uh, basically sought out to be like American proof uh, when it comes to their actual, you know, uh, economy. Right. Um, so, again, I'm willing to I'm just coming out here and saying again. These narratives, the technology world is geopolitical. It's like way more powerful. I think even in today's age, um, you know, with media and social media and how the internet has flourished, I think in today's age, all of these things are way more powerful than the military war. So, you know, Russia's attacking and, and it's physical and it's very tragic. I'm not going to sit here and try to discredit, you know, people dying, right? It's a very tragic situation. But you could clearly see from every other angle, from the capital, technology, trade, economic narrative, that Russia is losing. It's almost being attacked from all fronts except for physical. It's like every country is trying to hold out and not physically attack them. And I think it's getting to a point where China is probably not going to join Russia or, you know, in any way, shape or form by, by taking over Taiwan, like everybody's saying on the Internet. I think it might get to a point where they just like watched Russia, Russia get put on this like like get put out to dry. Like everybody's like destroying Russia's credibility. And I don't know if China wants to do that. I don't know if they want to take that, take that narrative as the villain. Um, uh, and I think it's kind of crazy that we're watching this play out, but you know, Bitcoin, um, you know, as you can see here, when it comes to traits of money has a strategic advantage, not only in a narrative, but also in actual physical reality. So there's all these types of, you know, properties of money, verifiability, right? Fungibility, uh, is it portable? Is it durable? Is it divisible? Is it scarce? And you can see that Bitcoin pretty much wins in everything except for established history, right? Because it just, it's been um, less than 20 years since Bitcoin's existence. And there's nothing you can do about that except for time. So eventually over time, uh, Bitcoin will have a very good um, established history. And I think the reason why they put durable uh, moderate is because Bitcoin has been successfully double spent. I know people on the internet don't tell you that because they don't dive into, uh, you know, a uh, cryptocurrency's past. Uh, but I've done that for you guys. And, and, you know, I'm telling you right now, Bitcoin has successfully been double spent. And this is why yeah, the durability is moderate. But, you know, as Bitcoin gets bigger, and as uh, the, you know, there's more um, miners uh, and more people to verify transactions, it'll be very hard uh, to double spend Bitcoin. And I'm arguing and saying it's probably never going to be double spent again. Uh, but, you know, basically Bitcoin wins in everything, if, as you guys can see here. So again, bringing it back to the original narrative, if I'm a billionaire, if I'm a big entity and I have wealth uh, and I'm in Russia and I'm trapped in this system that Putin is like forcing on people, like, uh, you know, we, again, we already see Russian billionaires calling for peace, right? We already see the Russian billionaires calling for peace. So if Putin just keeps pushing, if he keeps pushing on this war, I will go out on a limb here and bet that these guys are going to accept crypto. They're going to find a way to siphon their money, right, into crypto. Why? Because Putin controls the banks. Putin controls all these monetary systems. Essentially, he controls their wealth. Not only that, but America controls. We see the sanctions happening right now, right? Which I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about. We see the sanctions happening, um, and they're literally stopping banks. So the, the billionaires in their head are realizing, wow, wait, yeah, I'm a billionaire, but really, am I a billionaire if other people control my money, right? Am I really a billionaire if people control my money? You're not because they could just take it from you. And that's the point, right? So if we come over here, you can see that this was like a big historical or historic moment. 
um, you see uh, somebody calling out to Elon Musk, um, and I don't know where the tweet went, but Elon Musk said that he successfully um, is going to send some Starlinks and he's going to get internet basically basically connected um, in Ukraine to help uh, the people of Ukraine, right? Uh, so this is star called Starlink and it's basically just like a broadband internet access across the globe. Um, and you see the big entity that has already publicly promoted Bitcoin, right? This big public, big public figure. Um, and if you don't know uh, this chart I showed before, um, again, this is my own research and my own research only. Nobody else has done this before. Uh, but if you haven't seen this chart before, okay, um, and this is the BLX, basically, there's a couple of things that always happen that catalyzes Bitcoin. And one of the biggest ones is having a big character, a big hero, um, which in today's age, I think is Elon Musk. Uh, but it, in the past, it's been other characters, um, like it's been um, the Winklevoss twin, uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, you guys know the characters, the big, uh, hopefully, you know, the history of crypto, but Winklevoss twins has been like the biggest one in the past. Uh, but Elon Musk has been kind of like the villain a little bit because he banned Bitcoin transactions uh, and it kind of dumped the market. Um, and then you see him actually taking uh, action. I don't know where his tweet went. I wish I had his tweet. It literally showed it here two seconds ago. Uh, right there. I think he deleted it. Um, so yeah, so you can see Elon Musk said Starlink service is now active in Ukraine um, and he's giving them more terminals. You can see Elon Musk is, is like joining the winning like narrative, basically the, the heroes. He's trying to be a hero. Um, and again, he's been an active character in the Bitcoin market. So if you see him getting positive, I can almost guarantee that eventually he will say or there, it will be implied uh, that Elon Musk tells people to get into crypto. Uh, to you know, get away from sanctions, which is gonna bring it home. I promise. Towards the end of the video, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. It's getting out of hand. It's getting out of hand. But clearly, you know what the winning side is. I mean, that's uh, Ukraine. They're gonna win, I think, uh, whether it's physical or not. But in the long run, they're definitely winning. You can see anonymous, okay, attacking, right? Which is again this group, right? You see Google attacking the biggest tech companies on planet earth, the biggest companies with the most wealth. Some of these companies have more money than whole countries are all banding together on the winning side of attacking. Okay. Russia through every other, every median possible. They're attacking Russia through every median possible, except for, um, you know, physical, except for physical. So the war is being fought on a different front. We see Anonymous hacking their televisions. They hack their televisions. You guys can go look at the specific news for yourself. I'm just putting the pieces of the puzzle together for you, okay? They're, they're attacking, right, um, you know, their televisions and showing people in Russia what's truly going on. They're hacking government websites. They're intercepting, uh, you know, uh, Russian uh, military conversations. Uh, they are definitely joining the winning side, right? Um, and again, we see Russian billionaires losing wealth, over 126 billion in wealth, right? They're losing money because of Putin's actions, right? Um, and in the West is cutting off banks. They're cutting off SWIFT, right? So in again, Russian billionaires' heads are like, am I really a billionaire if they own me, right? If they own me, am I really a billionaire? You see, again, SWIFT is one of the biggest uh, cross-border payment systems. I mean, cryptocurrency is basically a competitor to SWIFT. Um, and they're cutting off SWIFT and, and in these billionaires' heads, and not only the billionaires in Russia, but every billionaire, every billionaire in the world is like questioning, okay, if America can cut off SWIFT, so let's think about it, right? Let's say there's a billionaire in country A. If the billionaire is not the president of country A and the president decides to do something stupid, well, billionaire in country A will likely lose all of his money because we are literally seeing this play out right now as a narrative. They're cutting off all of the Russian billionaires <laughs> is what I'm saying. So all the other ones in the world are like, oh snap, let's let's like, am I really a let's let's adopt something that you know my president can't screw me over for, right? Let's adopt something that no matter what my president does, I'm still a billionaire. And and again, this is playing out. Now I also want to point out that again, I said this in the beginning, but it shows really right here. Um, you know, wars. Up until, war, up until wars, um, you have uh, the price of gold do well. But as wars hit, typically gold doesn't do well. Uh, so you can see that World War II was started in about 1940, uh, depending on what you want to consider the actual start date. But around this period, and gold died all the way up until 1970, right? Um, 
and, and I think it's pretty crazy, right? Also, uh, 2000 is when the housing market, bub I mean, not the housing market, the, the actual, um, uh, the, the stock market, right? The tech boom or the tech bubble popped here. Um, and then gold did well. So it's actually like gold does well up until wars, but when wars happen, um, gold doesn't do well. Uh, and we see this uh, time and time again, and oil is kind of following the similar trajectory. So obviously there, you should isolate them and there should be specific events, but commodities do well up until wars. Once wars happen, it's almost like people get rid of the commodities. It's almost like people were selling gold right here. They were selling gold, right? Uh, to pay for uh, physical items or whatever the case is. So uh, I just want to attack it from that perspective uh, so you guys can kind of see that. Um, but um, we see the narrative playing out, uh, just bringing it home, like right here, Ukraine's asking uh, for cryptocurrency donations, right? They could have asked for anything, but they're asking specifically for Bitcoin and ETH. Like, I think that's crazy as heck. I think it's so crazy. And it's a clear signal uh, that cryptocurrencies are the median of exchange for specific events like these. There's no way uh, to put it to you guys. It's pretty obvious, but uh, it's not about the amount of do donations that I think everybody's, everybody's like, oh, breaking news on Twitter. Uh, you know, it's like $3 million now. It's not the amount. It's about, it's the fact that the Ukrainian government chose this as the median of exchange, especially in uh, uncertain conditions. So although gold does bad uh, during war, I think Bitcoin increases in utility during war. It's almost like gold is used um, to prepare for war. And then once war happens, it's almost like you're selling the gold to use things. Um, but with crypto, you could see the use case increases during war times. Why? Because if we bring it back to the original image here, right? It's divisible. It's the same properties as gold, but it's also divisible, portable, right? You can move it, right? You can move it anywhere, okay? And verifiable, right? It's its own system that's not centralized. Again, the reason why Bitcoin and cryptos will likely get adopted during uncertain times that we see here is because it's divisible and portable, right? The specific elements of it are made for these times, right? It's definitely made for these times. So I want to bring it home with this here, and it's kind of freaked me out. This is the Bitcoin billionaires list. Now, this is not like the most richest people from, you know, descending order, uh, but this is the billionaires list of people that have lost the most money. So the year to date change. Now, this is going to blow your mind a little bit, guys. It's going to blow your mind a little bit, but why are the majority of all the billionaires that lost money, all of the billionaires that lost money, why are they already adopting crypto? It is so crazy. This is so crazy. But look it up, ready? Elon Musk, clearly, everybody knows he adopted crypto. Mark Zuckerberg, metaverse, right? Uh, this is the creator of Binance. Uh, he, he adopted crypto. This guy, Bernard, he was already having rumors, right? Uh, I actually have some articles here. Uh, with everybody, but basically all of these guys, I mean, have showed uh, this guy right here. He's denying that he set up a firm, but it's clear like as day that he did set up a firm for cryptos. Um, but in general, what I've noticed through this list, and you can go look at it for yourself, um, or you can just take my word for it. Um, if you are in tech and you lost money <laughs> and you're a billionaire, if you meet these three categories, if you're in technology, you lost money, uh, the most money, and you're a billionaire, you essentially adopt crypto. Why? Because when people lose money, when people contract, and I see this in my company, they have to essentially get better, right? It, it, life goes through these cycles where, you know, you, you get, uh, you know, you get kind of like, you make a whole bunch of money, right? You solve a big problem, you make a whole bunch of money, and then you get like really spoiled. You get really spoiled, right? Um, and, and if essentially, you know, uh, reality strikes and you start losing money. When you lose money, you contract into the situation where you have to create innovation again. When you, when you, when you contract into the situation, you have to, I'm doing it in my, in my business right now. I'm like, all right, let me fix the systems in my business because cryptocurrency is having issues. Right. Um, so, you know, I got to fix the systems of my business and make what I already have better. And, and when you solve that problem or that innovation sparks again, then you start making money again. And again, these guys lost money. So they're coming back all these billionaires are coming back. They're reevaluating their situation, right? They're reevaluating their situation and they're saying, okay, what can I do now that will continue to make me money in the future? And, and that spark or that innovation is obvious. It is crypto. Bringing it back again to the Russian billionaires. They are contracting right now as we speak. The Russian billionaires are contracting and they have to 
adopt innovation to save their wealth. And it looks like we might have a massive billionaire adoption cycle from Russian billionaires and other billionaires. I'm calling it now. If this war continues with Putin and he starts wilding out of control and there's more government sanctions and these billionaires keep seeing that their money is not definite, they will try to adopt and, and, and get the innovation and they will try to adopt something that's definite. And this is the truth, okay? The, when you lose, it wakes you up. When you lose that, like, that, that race, what do you do? You go back home and you work harder. And that's what these billionaires are doing. They went back home. The people that made the most money, I'm willing to bet, and I didn't look into it, but these people probably not thinking about cryptocurrency too much. Look, Warren Buffett, he's an obvious critic of crypto, right? So these people, they're, 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 they're inflated, right? They're making money, so they're not really stressed, right? But these people have to adopt, or these people have to adapt, excuse me, not adopt. <laughs> Maybe they have to adopt after they adapt, right? But they have to adapt because they, are, they lost, right? Technology sector is obviously doing, is having issues, right? So pretty much every single person on this list, and there's obviously uh, specific situations where it's not the case, but the overwhelming majority of all of the billionaires that lost money the overwhelming majority, they are all adopting the new innovation that is crypto. So pay attention to what's going on, guys. Pay attention to the longer cycle. Let's clear our vision. Let's stop worrying about the specifics, right? Stop worrying about the specifics. Are you going to get drafted, right? Um, and just spark innovation within yourself. If you lost money, look at what the billionaires are doing. They're not crying about it, right? They're doubling down on what they know best and they're continuing to flourish, which I'm going to show you in this video, okay, a way that you could double down to win, all right? And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. First thing, this is the best skill I have ever, like when I first got started before my YouTube channel, when I was actually trading, um, this skill right here, I think is probably the biggest contributor of me making money, like making a million dollars. Um, and it's because I was able to look at people's incentive model and identify who's truly uh, has, who truly has credibility, right? And what do I mean? What do I mean by that? All right. Well, it's very simple. All right. So the reason why Bitcoin is so secure is because people get paid to secure it. Right. And then that payment turns out to be a lot because Bitcoin gets adopted. So if I get paid five bucks for securing uh, Bitcoin and then I hold that five bucks and that five bucks turns to a thousand dollars, then I'll, I'm going to secure Bitcoin. OK, it's as simple as that. So Bitcoin, um, you know, basically has verified transactions, which is basically security and it gets secured and Bitcoin miners get paid for security. So the reason why it's one of the most foolproof networks on planet Earth is because it incentivizes everyone to secure it. People have uh, famously said, and you can look this up if you want, uh, but people have famously said that if you want to hack Bitcoin, essentially you have to spend more than the whole entire network of Bitcoin. That's the only way to hack it because it flips this, right? Because if you could say, hey, Bitcoin miners, I'm going to pay you more than what Bitcoin's paying you, then you essentially have hacked Bitcoin. Right. So there's no like literal technical technological hack. It's just, you know, it's again, uh, if you want to hack Bitcoin, you got to pay the miners to hack the Bitcoin. Right. So <laughs> it's so funny. But like, and, you know, these incentives kind of move the world and I'm using it, uh, uh, you know, to help you guys get success in crypto. So let's talk about these free social media influencers. And I know you see all of these guys coming out exposing these influencers and it's really going to come and hit uh, this point home for why I never accept sponsorships. Right. Um, so basically we have a social media influencer. They share free information just like me on the internet, but all of their money comes from promotions and advertising revenue. That's how they make money. They promote other coins. They promote NFT projects, right? And then they get paid. So basically there's this kind of vulnerability here. And this is like the weak part of their business model. Okay. That I have eradicated out. I burned this part of my business model and I just put a clear line in the sand and I said, I'm not going to ever accept a sponsorship ever. Right. And this is why you guys never get me shilling a coin. I never, I, I, when I shill it, it's from my own heart. Okay. It's not because I got paid by any project ever in the history of all of my YouTube channel. Right. So when you look at this, right, they have to vet the project. They have to just imagine, right. They have a, a 10 projects that want to pay them to promote. Right. So I have a following of a million followers and there's 10 projects that want to pay me to promote. Well, if I look through it, my incentive model is this just to say yes to all 10 projects. If I get paid and that's the only way I get paid, 
think about it. I got employees I got to pay. I got a family and wife and, and daughters I got to pay or, or, or sons I got to pay, right? I got kids. I got to make sure they're good. So of course I'm going to accept all 10 projects, even if one of them are a scam. And you know, they don't like directly do this. They're lying to themselves, right? So what happens is a scam comes up on their table. They have a process that vets them. They usually will be like, all right, this is probably a scam, but I don't know. It's probably not a scam because, you know, they're paying a lot of money and, uh, you know, the devil creeps in and then he lied to himself. But the problem is, okay, again, is because they get paid to do this is the problem. This situation is probably genuine. And this is why you see uh, a lot of the influencers like, oh, yeah, I shilled this scam, but I didn't know. I didn't know that it was a scam when I shilled it. I didn't know that when they paid me $100,000, which guys, by the way, I'm giving up hundreds of thousands of dollars. I can permit, I can, I think my run rate right now is about uh, 20 grand per video. Um, but again, by the way, <laughs> I'm giving up that much money, right? So these guys are like, these guys are like, oh, I didn't know it was a scam, but you put yourself, like if you go to a strip club <laughs> and like you put yourself in a strip club and then you tell yourself, oh, I'm not going to look at the naked woman. Like, is it that stupid? Yeah, that's dumb. You are incentivizing yourself, okay, <laughs> by the by the devil, right? And and again, I'm not like a, I'm not like a, um, I'm not very religious. Um, I am to a certain extent, but like, it's just good versus evil, right? Like if you go, like it's for example, it's the same thing. If you sell a gun to an evil person, and that person goes and kills somebody. And then, and then you're like, oh, oh, well, it wasn't me that killed them. Right? Like, it's like, no, stupid. You sold the gun. <laughs> like, why are you putting yourself in that situation in the first place? And this is what's happening right now. This is why you see all these influencers getting popular by exposing uh, the crypto influencers because they put themselves in this, this really bad incentive mechanism. It's really, really bad. Right? So, again, um, uh, this is like ultimately what happens where they we shill the projects. Um, and yeah, uh, the influencer gets paid and uh, a lot of people get wrecked. So again, my incentive program, and you guys know this, and this is why, uh, you notice that on my channel, we talk about things that most people don't talk about, right? It's, it's very different. It's very different because I get incentivized in a different way, right? So I'm a social media influencer. I put out free information, but I promote my product. My product is directly under my control. And if my product doesn't do something like get results, basically the only metric in my business, and I tell this to all my coaches, it's very simple. It's so simple. And I love simplicity. And this is why I've been using this Figma app that you guys have been seeing a lot because it really breaks it down for you. But it's so simple. If my clients do not get results and they don't learn how to get results for themselves, essentially my business will die. My business will die. That's the way it works. My business dies if people don't get results. Why? Because they don't, they don't rebuy from me. They don't rebuy from me. And then, yeah, they, they die, right? So the reason why I've been able to maintain such a high repurchase rate of fundamental secrets is because we get results. And I have put a line in the sand by saying, I never want to accept a cent from this. Because if I do, then my company relies on something else. My company relies on what? getting more subscribers and more views. That's what my company will rely on. And it will rely on me getting promotions. And then it will make me desperate. And I'll go find these sketchy promotions. And then I'll do promotions from company or from, you know, uh, cryptocurrency that pay me the most, which by the way, guys, the ones that pay you the most, they have a reason why they're paying you the most influencer. If there's influencers watching this video, you should definitely uh, take note right now, because the reason why these scam projects pay you the most is because nobody else is willing to do a promotion for them because they're a scam, right? So I just completely weeded this out of my life. And this is why I have a digital course. <laughs> Everybody's like has this negative stigma for paid, um, you know, uh, I guess you could say paid uh, groups, but you know, your mom told you, right? I know your parents told you that free um, comes at a cost. And this is that cost, your bank account. Your trading strategy is that cost. The reason why you're not making money in today's market, if you've lost money, is because the trading strategy that the free people are telling you sucks and they are not incentivized to get results. I am incentivized to produce results on a consistent basis. So I get paid more when people get more results. And this is why my channel is so different 
And this is why I never accept the sponsorships and you get the point. If you can identify credibility, all you have to do is look at the influencer. There's nothing wrong with following people on Twitter. There's nothing wrong with following people on, you know, uh, cryptocurrency help on the internet, but you have to be able to identify how they get paid. And that will tell you if what they're doing is genuine or not. It's as simple as that. But I want to conclude this video here. That's it for this content. If you appreciate it, like the quality, like if you like the quality, I, I say the same thing over and over. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism, subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. I'm not cutting out any of the mistakes. I love you guys. I love everything you're doing. I see the positive comments. You guys know I didn't quit cryptocurrency. Stop just looking at titles, okay? I was looking to get your attention. Listen to the video again. I was saying that I don't want to identify with crypto. I want to identify as a person that brings freedom. So if it ever gets to the point where cryptocurrency goes to a zero, well, guess what? I have an incentive to get more results. And that will force me into a situation where I have to learn how to make money in other markets. That's all I was saying in that video. But if you read the headline, well, you're doing exactly what I tell people not to do, which is headline investing. That's it for this video, guys. Catch you in the next video.